Are we in focus? <laughs> Do you know what? I don't know if it's uh, it's old age uh, or the hot weather. Um, we're experiencing something of a late spring slash early summer heat wave right now. We haven't had rain. Uh, I'm recording this on the 5th of June. We haven't had rain since the 8th of May, so perhaps I'm going nuts. But this is the second video in a row where I've recorded the whole thing and uh, I forgot to turn that on. <coughs> so no audio. Oh, I am. I am losing my mind. I'm losing my mind! <sighs> During the meanwhile, no, 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 no. Well, no, no, it is the less than dynamic duo, Dexter and me, back with yet more, yet more video content to both enthrall and entertain in equal amounts, or something like that. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to review my Venus Optics Leowa 65mm f2.8 ultra macro lens. Uh, but before we begin, an apology for this, what would normally be a Tech Tuesday uh, a video on your Saturday morning. And this, of course, you are watching this on, on a Tuesday. Oh, it doesn't matter. Uh, now, I don't normally review anything until I've owned it for around six months or so. But I've shot this lens so much over the past couple of weeks that I feel confident enough to give you my, uh, my oh-so-valued opinion on it. And I also wanted to ask myself a question, and no, not why do I keep making videos that nobody actually watches, but could this tiny light lens actually replace the goat? <laughs> uh, no, not that goat, but my micro nickel 105mm f2.8 G AIS VR ED lens. A lens that viewers of this channel will know I hold in the highest of high esteem despite all those abbreviations. And I know, I know it's a bold question to ask and a tall order for any macro lens, let alone a 350 pound or so manual, everything one. Uh, while I jabber on incoherently, I'll put the lenses, dimensions, uh, etc. on screen now for you to pause the video and read if you're interested in that sort of thing. And if you're all now sitting comfortably, or more likely uh, fighting the urge to fall asleep, uh, I'll tell you exactly what I think of uh, this mighty little lens. It is superb. There you go, end of review, uh, and you can now go back to doing whatever it was you were up to before. All right then, <laughs> let me tell you exactly why I think this is such a great, a great little lens. First off is its price. Now I paid £369 for mine and you have to admit that is rather inexpensive for what this lens offers. It's over £200 cheaper than any Fujifilm macro lens with the 30 and 60 coming in at around the £600 mark new and the 80mm are eye-wateringly expensive £1,100 or so again if you're buying new. Of course there are uh, discounts uh, to be had by buying used or waiting for you know cashbacks and I always recommend that route if I'm honest but with just this one, uh, one caveat the only piece of Fujifilm equipment I've ever had an issue with uh, was the 60mm macro lens. Uh, mine broke. I'm, I'm okay, Fujifilm repaired it under warranty, uh, but it would put me off buying another what, another used, used example. Of course, there are cheaper third-party alternatives available from the likes of, you know, Seven Artisans, Niwa, etc. And I'd be happy with any of those, uh, but it was the Leowa that I chose primarily on the basis of good reports I'd read when investigating the, uh, the GFX mount 17mm lens in the past. But I think price wise we can all agree that this lens is a bargain. Secondly is its size and weight. This thing is minuscule and so light for what it offers. So I hardly feel it on any of my uh, Fujifilm cameras, even the smallest X-E1. Now you'll likely be shooting on a tripod, so size and weight aren't really an issue, but for those times when you need to carry the lens over any distance or shoot handheld, uh, then it really does, it really does come in into its own. 
Build quality too seems really good. Now I say seems because I have not had the lens that long. But from reading others' experiences with this and other Leowa lenses, I really don't think uh, there are any concerns. Uh, I asked my good friend uh, Izzy Abulila for his thoughts on the brand uh, as he has shot with the 17mm medium format lens on his GFX kit for some time now. And it's good news. Izzy reports excellent build quality and no problems with his lens with everything everything uh, still operating like new so thanks for that uh, thanks for that Izzy uh, from my own experiences up until now I can tell you that the focus and aperture rings are buttery smooth in their operation with the aperture ring having light indents at full stops rather than you know full on full on clicks and the fit of the X mount onto my Fujifilm cameras it is it's good as any uh, Fujifilm lens offering with zero play at all. Uh, even the lens cap and the metal lens hood are flawless, uh, the latter clicking into place with a very satisfying... Uh, talking of which, the lens itself is seemingly of mainly metal in its construction with all the markings etched into the barrel and not just painted on and uh, most importantly it's got a lovely blue ring to mark it out as a uh, special. Uh, but enough of that flim flam. A lens can be a cheap, small, light uh, and well built as you like. But if it takes crappy pictures, then all those other attributes are worthless. And on this point, I can report there are absolutely no, no concerns. The lens offers two to one magnification at its closest focus distance of 17 centimeters, naturally reducing to one to one and smaller as you move further away from your subject. At its closest distance, depth of field is razor thin and so focus stacking well, where possible becomes a necessity even uh, even when stopped down. Uh, now I'm no pixel peeper and I prefer to look at a picture in its entirety to judge image quality and the output of the uh, Leowa is simply excellent. Um, colours are accurate, vibrant and beautiful, contrast is excellent and things like distortion and chromatic aberration are just, well, well, they're non-existent to my eye, uh, at least. In use, and especially if you are new to Fujifilm or manual third-party lenses, there are just a, few, uh, a couple of things you need, you need to remember. Uh, firstly, you'll need to set the camera up to shoot without lens, and I'll come on to why in a moment. And if your Fujifilm camera has IBIS, then you'll need to input the focal length uh, into the mount adapter setting and remember to switch it to this uh, if like me you have more than one more than one manual lens that you use right then are there any uh, negatives uh, well if you rely heavily on autofocus then yes as you have to you know focus this lens yourself now this isn't much of a pain as you can rely on Fujifilm's excellent focus peaking assistance to ensure sharp shots but things like following a subject or when shooting a bit of video well let's just say let's just say it's tricky <laughs> now in common with any macro lens close focusing can be problematical now, I find it easier to set the lens to its closest focus distance and then move the camera in and out either on a macro rail or by moving my head and hands to attain sharp focus. Obviously you won't benefit from IAF or any of the subject detection settings if your camera if your camera offers them. Personally I tend to shoot the majority of my macro images using manual focus anyway, so so this doesn't bother me. Rather more annoying though is the lack of any aperture EXIF data when reviewing your images later. Unless you record this manually, you'll have no idea what aperture you use to capture the scene uh, when looking back at it uh, on your computer later. Again, this doesn't really bother me, although I do like to have that information uh, available if I can. But it's not a deal breaker for me, uh, but obviously your mileage, your mileage may vary. Although the lens focuses internally with no moving parts on the barrel's exterior, there is no weather sealing gasket on the mount where the lens meets the camera. This doesn't bother me again, but if you're 
often using your camera in very wet weather or dusty locations uh, you might want to look elsewhere for something more shall we say sealed <laughs> all in all though i am really happy with my purchase and have absolutely no complaints about this lens uh, whatsoever right then uh, let's get to the important question of whether it could compete uh, and perhaps even and i can't believe i'm saying this uh, replace my micro nickel lens and the answer is a resounding what do you think <laughs> it's a no <laughs> um, it's not that the focal length is inferior uh, at a full frame equivalent of 97.5 millimeters it's neither here nor there uh, it, in fact I think the range from say 90 to 105 is the perfect sweet spot for a macro lens anyway it's not that the build quality uh, and manual operation make it inferior uh, okay it may not have the heft of my uh, nickel after all that thing is built like a tank but the layer is more than good enough in that respect and finally it's not that the image quality is in any way inferior it isn't and in many respects it's better especially in things like small detail reproduction uh, even on my uh, lower resolution Fujifilm cameras the lens offers stunning amounts of detail and on my X-T5 it has no problem uh, uh, making full use of the camera's 42 megapixel no the reason this could never replace my Nikko lens is quite simple while the images are undoubtedly excellent with uh, abundant detail sharp contrast and lovely colors they lack the soul of my Nikko lens. I actually think the reproduction of the Leoa is too good. <laughs> and now this, you know, soul could also be done to the combination of the Nikko on my D700 body. But I even found when adapting it to one of my Fujis that the images just had that indefinable something about them. The out of focus background areas are simply more out of focus, but on my D700, obviously that's a factor of the full frame sensor but the out of focus areas seem to take on a more subtle less cluttered and more pastel hued appearance than than the Leo is albeit still excellent reproduction perhaps it's just me and my eye and you might disagree but uh, that's what's important uh, this this art form is all about all about subjective opinions Okay, to wrap things up, uh, here's a list of all the available mounts for this lens, and I'll also leave a link to the Venus Optics website in the description below, where you can read all about the uh, technical uh, gubbins of the lens. Gubbins. Is that a technical term? Right then, that is it for this week's video, and we're going to be taking a short little break from YouTube and my blog as well uh, until early July. Uh, I'll still be posting images on uh, Instagram, uh, hopefully, uh, so you can catch me there if you like. Uh, right then, uh, as I, I usually sign off, I will sign off by saying stay safe, stay well, look after yourselves, your loved ones, your little furry, scaly, whatever, pets. <laughs> and uh, just be nice, okay? Be nice and the world will be a much nicer place back to you uh yeah we'll see you in i don't know three or so weeks three or four weeks time i guess all right then bye bye had all of my jewels so i picked up my shoes and got up and walked away oh i was just a boy giving it all away well, tired and failed, now all I can say is I threw it all away. Oh, I was just a boy, giving it all away. Sail away, sail away. Ooh, well, I know better now, I know better now. Giving it all away oh, oh, yeah I know better now I know better now I'm Giving it all away When out in the world 
too much for my nerves Well, only myself to blame See, I was just a boy And there was nobody else to blame Done all I can now, it's out of my hands Stand on my head and say Ooh, I was just a boy Giving it all away Sail away Yeah, sail away Gonna give it all away. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I know better now. I know better now. I ain't gonna give it all. 